Talking Sex Live with Chet and Diane is recorded in front of a live audience. This show is for mature audiences only. Hello, you are Talking Sex Live with Chet and Diane. I am Chet Hart. I'm Diane. And we are streaming live right now to caffeine and we are also videotaping or rec- who the fuck videotapes anymore we're recording right now for youtube and also podcast where you can go ahead and listen to this and many other things on any major podcast streaming network i am chet hart i'm diane hart we are unlicensed sex therapist we're actually uh, a couple who has had a whole lot of sex and we just want to share our knowledge with the world. And so we, we don't have any type of actual PhDs or any articles or anything like that, but we just want to go ahead and share our knowledge with everybody from all our experiences that we have had. We are joined with our producer. How are you doing today, Wells? I've been okay. The quest for love has been pretty quiet oh, yeah? recently. Yeah. Things have died down yeah. a little bit. Things have uh, there's a lull in the mm-hmm. hot back summer at the moment. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, hoping it comes back soon, but uh, no dates since the last time we talked. Oh, crazy! I'm sorry to hear yeah. that. I just uh, uh, I want that special someone, you know, we emotionally and spiritual connect with, and sometimes we do it, and it's not just about the doing it part, although that's part of it. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, what I'm searching for. Got it. We also have our our sex toy and uh, polygamist uh, uh, polyamory specialist <laughs> Peter in the house. How are you doing today, Peter? I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah, there's so many poly words; people get them mixed up all the time. Yes, is bigamist not a word that people want to hear anymore? Uh, I think there's a lot of words that have a lot of stigma around mm. them, so we try to stay away. Luckily, no one. Uh, I don't think people really poisoned polyamory and when you combine mm-hmm. the many and love it's it's kind of hard to to ruin those so yeah uh, that's a good one that one's mm-hmm. relatively safe so we'll stick with that one for now yeah i got a little bit of news so i i recently had hernia surgery i had a guinal hernia which is where your intestines comes out near your your in your groinal area there's actually some very soft spots right around where your penis is at like right off up to the sides in your groin where if uh, you you put too much stress or if you stress your muscles if you over uh, tighten you can push out your actual uh, intestines through that little spot right there so what I did uh, and it's very comical uh, and I don't suggest anybody else did this but so for a long time I held in my farts my flatulence Mm -hmm. my gas around diane uh i just i don't know it wasn't exactly i I thought it wasn't sexy i thought she you know right about that it wouldn't turn her on or we wouldn't i would kill the mood uh so i didn't want her to see me in that light of this guy who constantly you know passes gas so i would hold them in and then i would try to get it all out when i was in uh the bathroom and one day, uh, this is back in November, I just pressed a little bit too hard and then, boop, there goes my intestine right through my hmm. intestinal, my, my, uh, the membrane wall. And it, uh, did you feel it when it happened? Oh yeah. It was like, very uncomfortable. Oh, wow. And for the first couple days, like I, it, I felt like kind of somewhat nauseous and it hurt and I just had to sit there and I was like, oh crap, this is not good. Eventually I just got used to it. It wasn't so much painful as it was just more uncomfortable and it wouldn't be super uncomfortable. I could just live normally, but it was more of like whenever I did like push ups or any lifts or something like that, I could, st- I could kind of feel it. Uh, certain um, spots and more I ate the more like gas I had that it would actually push out that intestine Mm. so I actually had uh, the inguinal hernia surgery and it was they it's a outpatient kind of deal where they just they put you under and then they put a mesh in right around the spot where the uh, hernia came out and then you go home and it's only a few hours and but it uh it basically i couldn't really walk very well no, no, i no. couldn't uh I, I couldn't move without it having being really really painful um but 
you know, two weeks in, you can start walking a little bit better. Four weeks in, you're you're uh, you're good to go for lifting and whatnot. But we found sex to be very challenging, actually. Mm-hmm. But we we made it happen. We made it work. Uh, a lot of me just laying down and Diane sitting on my face. Um, that's correct. Yeah, that was that's that. I mean, it's actually pretty hot. Uh, I mean, Diane has sat on my face before. But I don't know, just when you had some type of limitation there, it's almost like uh, like a role playing thing. I even got Diane a really hot uh, nurse outfit. It wasn't yeah. a whole lot there, but it, mm-hmm. it was it was like a, we just played along and it was our sexual fantasy kind of deal. So there's that. Uh, as soon as I was able to lay on my side, we could do some side uh, sex side action side action. We could it took do them a while to get done, though. Yeah, just because the whole area is swollen and um even my the the bottom of my shaft was swollen so like oh, oh yeah his balls my balls were like were the like size rats. of almost like a softball like my my Red test balls. my scrotum was mm-hmm. just gigantic and you were still having sex oh yeah, yeah. he well, was you Doctors, didn't, you didn't, he's a true you didn't want to take a break well i mean I, I have to please diane and no you so, were pretty horny oh yeah i mean come on I, it's 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 Chet here, so. Well, I was going. I was going to say, in your quest to avoid turning off Diane, mm-hmm. you sure ended up with the ultimate level of potential turnoff. Yes. Uh, however, it sounds as though you uh, you t- to meet uh, lemonade out of those giant lemons you were. That's uh, right. Were we find a way. Carrying between Huge your legs. bowls. Uh, balls. I mean, I had just a, an enormous package. I would put my underwear on, and it was <laughs> just. It was package. like I stuffed my pants. Oh, it was man. huge. Well, if only it was the balls that were the turn on for most women. Yeah, but I mean, mm-hmm. I I've never experienced balls like, like this oh, before. Oh yeah, some nice balls. It, it, they were. It was nice big balls. I mean, I had to ice my 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 testicles because it hurt so bad. But um, those went away, thank God. Uh, yeah, just back, recently. Yeah, like, it's like a, a few days ago. It was a few days. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it was like three or four days ago. And uh, yeah, it's it's fine now. Um, definitely a lot more sex. It was there was a point where it was very kind of just. I, it took me a long time to get done. Reverse cowgirl was the best position we found, mm-hmm. and it was actually quite hot and fantastic. It felt really great. If uh, you haven't tried it out, um, both partners can can regulate the amount of uh, the frequency and mm-hmm. the pressure and whatnot. And, and if, if your partner's had a really hot ass, it's mm-hmm. quite pleasurable. So, um, my favorites. yeah. So I highly recommend to not hold in your farts. Mm-hmm. And so we actually, it's not a big deal for us anymore. It's, uh, you know, it can be quite hilarious. It's fun. I mean, it's yeah. not I'm fun. letting mine out right now. There you go. Thank you, Peter. Oh, there you go. Peter. So, I Lesson mean, if, if you really truly love your partner, uh, then something like that won't deter them or won't turn them off. Just go ahead and be comfortable, live your life. There's no reason for getting a coinal hernia for trying to please your partner there. So. Yeah. Not but good. yeah, so that's uh, that was my my lesson learned. Lesson learned right there. Uh, but on with the show. Uh, any callers coming in there? Wells. Yeah, we have Eric Diamond from mm. Pawtucket, Massachusetts. He gets mm. a little overexcited with sex, so he wants tips on how to make it boring. All right. Well, you are talking sex live with Chet and Diane. I am Chad Hart. I'm Diane Hart. And is this Eric? Yeah, yeah, this is Eric. Hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. How are you doing today? Hi, hi how are you? I'm, I'm, I'm great. I'm all right. We're good. We're good. Good. Right. good. I, you know, I'm not the kind of guy that uh, would ever have thought I was going to fall into a sex show. Okay, that's all right. Uh, here no shame here. It's a, We're all friends, and we're all very sex positive here. We're here to help you out with whatever your needs are. I'm, I'm ashamed. No. Oh. But, you know, uh, at, at least I I can admit it publicly. Okay. So what's... Uh, what's, your, what's your question? Yeah, what's something that you're ashamed of? What, 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 what makes oh, you yeah, call in today uh, there? So, 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 so uh, you know... It took, I was a late bloomer, mm-hmm. you know, so I was uh, somebody who uh, d- didn't really uh, start participating in sexual experiences until like uh, 27. 
Oh, okay, that's All no right. big deal. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, sex for me is a very exciting experience. Oh yeah, well, of course. Uh, obviously, a lot of people, a lot of people think that. A lot of people believe it's. It, but for me, it's 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 so exciting. Mm-hmm. It's too exciting. Too exciting. Too exciting. Right? You, you just it's, have a problem holding too, it in it's, here. It's it's an overwhelming amount of feelings for me. Got it. All right, okay. and it's often a turn off for anyone else that's with me. How much I am into it at the time. Okay, so, so you're I'm saying. Wondering, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, but you go ahead. Oh, I'm just saying that if if you are turned on so much that it's a turn off for your partners, is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, 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 yeah. A little bit of that. Um, so it's and, not a and, premature and, ejaculation so is, issue. It's it's just that you're too enthusiastic, and that it, it's your personality that's that's driving people away. Uh, it, it's uh, you know, it, yeah, that's part of it. You know, it's just that it's so exciting that I, I I can't I freak out. I freak out a little bit. And so I'm looking for something that'll like maybe take it down a notch for me. You know. Like something to make sex a little more boring, just just so that I can handle it. Right. Well, you I could try handle it. focusing more on your partner and maybe giving her a back massage or telling her how pretty she looks. No, no, that's too sexy. That's too, no, too I need, sexy. I need, I need, I need drastic changes and results here, guys. This is not this is not a, a step down situation. Okay, so you're trying it's to. Too much. To, to calm yourself down so that you don't ejaculate. ejaculate too quickly or you just don't enjoy it. You're, you're making it too dramatic so that your partners are turned off. Turned off. So you need to just to calm yourself down. Is that where, is that correct? You, you ever get, you ever get, you ever get like a, a, a birthday present that's just so good that you're like, Oh my God, this is incredible. Yeah. Sega like, Genesis 1992. Like, yeah, imagine mm. imagine nice. that is your experience heightened and prolonged and even more so for, uh-huh. for the entire time that you're stuffing your, your lady. Got it. No, I mean uh-huh. I understand um, that you, it, that that can be a turn off. No, no, of... no, I don't think you do understand. All right, I'm getting a little too excited oh, yeah. just even talking about it and thinking about it. All right. All right. I'm sorry you're embarrassed here. Let's take a um, moment. You can, I, I, what I do, if, if Diane wants to get done for the third time and I haven't climaxed for the first time, I, I have to hold myself off. So I'll go ahead and I'll think of other things and uh, just things that aren't sexual at all. I think about baseball. I think about tasks that I have to do the next day. Uh, or I think about, you know, art projects that I'm working on, producing uh, stuff for the show. And just stuff that, and there's, it's a double-edged sword. You can do this too much, and so that you start to become, it's not really flaccid, but you lose your passion. And your boner. And your boner. And Mm -hmm. uh, so I wouldn't highly recommend it. I mean, sex is a journey. You should enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It's not. You should also get off. You should also get off. I mean, there's not. It's not the end goal. You know, it's. I mean, it is the goal to to ejaculate, but it's. It's about the journey that you get there and it's to yes. enjoy it. Mm-hmm. So if you try to, you know... I'm trying to enjoy it a little bit less. Okay. It's the problem. So uh, I, I don't think you're tracking here Have for you me. tried masturbating like, bef- think, before yeah. you have sex with your woman that day? So yeah. you're not it, as it, hard? No, it, has not, it, 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 it really doesn't even have anything to do with if oh. I'm coming or not. Okay. All right? It's okay. just like, okay. oh my God, we're doing this. Holy shit! Oh my God, we're going! It's go time. Oh, okay. like, it's know, more about your excited like a baseball game. Got yeah. it. Maybe Eric, may I, may I ask how often you're having sex? Um, mm-hmm. I think that's relevant. I mean, not often enough, because obviously uh, it doesn't really get all the way when that kind of thing happens. Right. Okay, so you're more just excited that you're actually having sex, but it's not so much that you're coming too soon, it's that that excitement makes it a turnoff for your partner. Is that is that correct? Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly right. Yeah. So, you know, you I, could... when you're saying, like, you know, 
art projects. It's like, yeah, maybe mm-hmm. a, a change of venue to somewhere more boring would be helpful. Maybe a now, library. You could also I, try focusing on your breath and just your breathing. Or about meditation. Mm-hmm. Uh, tantric sex has a lot to do with that. Trying different positions that... Um, I mean, if you believe in chi or, or just chakras or any of that, just focusing your energy, uh, instead of focusing your energy towards your genitals, focusing it up towards your your organs like your heart or your face. Um, but it, I guess everything that we've given advice for was more towards yeah. making people either ejaculate mm-hmm. or have pleasure. It's never de-pleasuring. Uh, Peter, it looks like you got... Yeah, uh, may I pitch in here? Okay, go ahead, Wells. Uh, it seems to me like the problem maybe isn't that he's overexcited. It's the way that he's expressing mm-hmm. himself. Mm-hmm. So maybe instead of saying like, oh, my God, this is actually happening. I can't believe we're having sex. Maybe just don't say any of those things mm-hmm. and then it won't be a turnoff. I can't help it, guy. I can't help it. Like, I'm just about to pop a couple of Xanax and rip off the vodka bottle so I can get so I can mellow out. Okay, I mean, have you had sex without the Xanax or the vodka? Uh, just, I've, just completely sober without any type of antidepressants or any anxiety pills? There, I'm literally like I've tried, I've tried everything, and I am literally unstoppable from exclaiming how excited I am to be having sex okay. at all. Eric, do you have a committed partner, or is this just the fact that you're not able to Fuck keep? No, one? you think you think somebody wants to be with somebody like me? Okay, when I do that. All right, so then the, may I ask, I, you know, and this may or may not be up. I can't imagine how terrifying it is for somebody else to experience what I go through. Well, sure. I mean, there are there are uh, uh, sex there are uh, uh, sexual surrogate therapists you can you could potentially see uh, who could help in a situation like this. <laughs> Alternatively, and you know, I know this is a. Uh, this is, you know, uh, sketchy territory for some people, but depending on where you live, legalities may be different than other places and depends on how, how much money you have. But the, the assistance of a, of, of a professional sex worker, um, someone whose job it is to, to put up with your quirks, because that's in, in a sense, that's oftentimes what sex workers are doing is that they're, they're having sex with someone who may have specific needs or interests that are hard to find in a, uh, a partner who's willing to deal with. But uh, in exchange for uh, financial compensation, you know, everyone, uh, you know, in any field, someone has to put up with difficult customers and so on. And so maybe paying a professional to go through this with you on a regular basis until your excitement kind of comes down from it. You're more used to the experience of, oh, here's a naked woman. She's mm-hmm. going to have sex with me. I'm going to get to penetrate her and, and you know, oh climax god. inside of her. Oh my god. Oh oh my is, god. is the description really? Okay. Oh. All right. When you watch porn, oh do you god. say... Oh, he, he, I, think, oh. I think he's, he's getting off right so now. Good. Yeah, the okay. description worked for oh. him. Oh my god. There's too much. That's so awesome. I was too detailed. Yeah. Oh. So this guy just. So you guys just, just. I, I just can't. I can't. So, I just, oh, oh my God! That sounds so awesome. Okay. Yeah. But, but it does. But, but yeah. you say. So you say. So you saying I should. I should get a whore. Uh, Eric. Yeah. yeah. Whore? Um. So go ahead, Diane. You had something That's to say there. I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh. Well. No. That. I mean. This is a good idea. Um. I. This is something that we kind of overlook in the whole sex industry is it's just like a it's a person just to you know get your jollies mm-hmm. off and just a person to have sex with but if you actually have sex problems and you need to figure this out it's a sex worker it's their job and so yeah. it's more of or a sex, sex therapist, therapist. It's just sex, like, oh my god sex 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 sex, 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 sex yes sex, okay sex, yeah sex, sex, sex. Ah! Ah! Yeah, sex oh. awesome. i think wells will give you oh, a yeah. number of yeah. a Wow. Yeah. One of our therapists. So I good. yes, how I will connect you. All right. This is how people make babies. Oh my god. Oh. Wow. All yeah, right, a Eric. taste of uh, a taste of Eric here. Well, I mean, what his well, partners I, have to deal with. Hopefully, I, you can give us some uh, Grubhub dinner there with that. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm used to being wine and dine first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are Are you still there, Eric? Or he's po- he I, fell yeah. asleep. I think he's smoking or sleeping right yeah. now. All right, man. Wow. That was okay. amazing. Good for him. So uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, well, I, I guess we were all 
auditorially didn't Wait. consent yeah um I, I, I'm not sure if he even even was was going through the, the the sexual process there so much as he was just loving the idea of it. I mean, that's what it sounded like to me. He's just yeah, I'm not even sure he was pleasuring himself. So. No, no. I, I think it was just more think, of like a mental thing that he was ejaculating yeah. from there. Yeah. Maybe he should go to the Netherlands to the red light district. Maybe it would help if they didn't understand what he was saying. In oh, English. yeah, so they just have sex with them. They all speak yeah. English there. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. not going to help. Yeah. True. I mean, maybe he could probably find a prostitute that just speaks Dutch if he asked. Or, uh, I guess, Thailand. Uh, Would they really help them, though, with that? I mean, I think he needs more of a therapist. I really think so, therapist. yeah. I mean, I, I was not thinking... Not because that's not... It's in a sense, it's a lot like aversion therapy. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But it, 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 what I'm what I'm thinking is he just he basically just needs to have sex enough that it mm-hmm, becomes mm-hmm. normal and mundane, mm-hmm. uh, like it is for so many Americans. It's much like the uh, premature ejaculation. That's happened to me many times. Yeah, if you immerse yourself in the whole sexual situation, uh, that's that's part of the therapy. It's mm-hmm. it's about being around a vagina and trying to slowly. Uh, penetrate without having to ejaculate first so that's it's kind of the reverse though where he i mean i guess it is it is kind of the same he's not ejaculating too soon he's just being too loud if he just shut yeah. his mouth he'd be fine yeah maybe he should try out some of those uh, silent meditation the, the masks yeah. the, duct tape yeah or or just the mm-hmm. the bdsm mask the, yeah with the zipper on it and just... honestly maybe that's exactly yeah, i'm I, i'm sorry he's off now but yeah. maybe that's what he needs as a dominatrix there someone who can actually literally whip him into shape oh that's perfect uh, maybe that will work for him just say shut the fuck up stop mm-hmm. talking or i'm gonna slap you or i'm gonna the hood whip on him you, and... or just or i'm gonna him. sit on your face to shut you or up, uh, the uh, ball gag mm-hmm. uh, pop oh, that in there perfect. he can't say a word yeah and, absolutely and then, then they're not going to be turned on and so eric if you're still listening out there there are women out there who will prefer that you do this and you'll be able to find some love uh, that you just might have to have a ball gag in your mouth. So, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for the uh, for all the, the advice, everybody. That was that was that was good. Uh, do we have anybody else calling in there, Wells? We do. We have Klaus. Klaus. Um, he's hoping that his partner can be more. Um, open-minded oh, to explore. All right. Let's hear what he has to say. All right. Guten Tag, Klaus. This is Chet and Diane. Uh, we are talking sex live. I'm Diane. And I am Chet. Is this Klaus? Hello. Ah, I, yes. Uh, I could, okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, yes. yes we, we can, can hear, hear you very much. Are you calling from Germany there? Or Dusseldorf? Or Dresden? Berlin? Ah, ah. Actually, I calling from uh, I I am calling from uh, international space station. Oh wow! Oh. Okay, that's a long distance call. That is very long distance. This is a this is a first right here. This is Nevada. I'm really excited to talk to somebody in space right space now. That's caller. pretty amazing. So, mm-hmm. so what's uh, your question? Uh, what's it's going on? How little delay there is. <laughs> are you are you part well, of? Uh, Go ahead. Let him talk. No, I, 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 I know that uh, you are, you are experts in the, in, in the uh, sexual advice uh, relationships, and I, uh, I, I want to, to see if I can liven up a sexual relationship with, with my partner here on the International Space Station. Now, other day we had a shoehorn, and uh, we did some fun things with that. A shoehorn. But, uh, Ah, shoehorn. Okay. Uh, yeah. it's, 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 uh, uh, she was like, please put the shoehorn here. Please put the shoehorn there. Oh. And so mm. I was like, okay, okay. And for some reason, even though there was a day, it was turning me on. And you but, need our uh, help for spicing it up more than what yeah, you're doing? Yeah, I mean, having sex like you're with having a good time. On, on a space station. Yeah. I, I can't beat that. Diane and I cannot beat that yeah, situation like right there. That's your... pretty amazing. So you, you need some more spice? Doing a good job. Well, you see, uh, he always be talking about his uh, his lover back on the planet. Oh, it's a, it's a man? Oh. It's a man and not a female? Uh, well, well, it's... Uh, necessarily a man and not necessarily a woman and not necessarily a human actually 
So a binary somebody it's who doesn't need to fight human. So I think a there's non-binary robot. So it was a robot on the yeah, space robot. station. Yeah, they come from a land far, far away. Okay. 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 So now oh. we're talking about an alien on the space station. They probably have more advice than what we could. Oh yeah. Could offer. So alien. Oh, you... Sorry. That's all right. Go ahead, Klaus. Yeah, go ahead. We'll do our best. I was just gonna say I I know that you are the best as it is, and uh, I just thank you for answering my call. Oh no problem. Uh, I, 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 we we just I, I, want I, I, to I, I, get I, I, the help that you that you seek right here. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, you suggest I use a big uh, shoehorn next time. Um, if that's uh, what you both want, then that's what you can do. So so Klaus, it really comes down to what your partner wants. Mm -hmm. uh, what turns them on? If your partner. Is into shoehorns, then go for it. Go, yeah, exactly. But yeah. if they're not, then also pay attention to what they are. Also, into. I'm going to point out as uh, as as the resident uh, sex toy uh, uh, expert in this group. Um, generally speaking, sex toys are built for the specific anatomy of the person using them. There's a variety of different sizes, shapes, angles, thrusts, movements, etc. That people have to go through to fi figure out what's well suited to them. But if you are, in fact, having sex with what you have implied, which would be a non-human, uh, perhaps a non-Earth being entirely, their anatomy is outside of our comprehension. So I couldn't even begin to recommend specific toys. And that's where you're really going to have to work on those communication skills. Does this, uh, this being that you're having a relationship with speak English? Uh, a few as I hear there. Uh, uh, I, I, uh, I don't know if they speak in audible language. It's a lot of hand gestures, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I'm not sure if they speak telepathically or not, but I feel like half the time they're reading my mind. Reading my mind so. Oh, wow. Okay. But you, you feel confident that you've been able to get consent for the yeah, activities that you're having with this being, because that's, that's concerning. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Uh, oh. We've, been, we've been doing about a half and on for, I don't know, uh, I've been up here in the International Space Station for about 80 months, and I would say that... Uh, Is it 80, you know, 80 months? months? Uh, 80 months? Yeah, yeah, Eight, yeah. Zero? I'm calling from... The yeah, I'm calling from the future. It is the year 2310, folks. Wow. And I must say, yeah, yeah, the International Space Station is not the same way it used to be. I can imagine yeah, it not I, being I, like uh, that yeah. in the year 2300. Um, mm. Well, Klaus, uh, anyway. I feel like you have some, some, some bigger problems here that you should really start to, to think about. Um, I'm not denying that you are from the year 2310 and you're calling from the International Space Station and you're having sex with a uh, non-human, but uh, I, I, I want you to take a step back and take a look around you and then ask what you really want. There's something that you want right now that uh, that you need that you need help with. Is there somebody? Is there something that you want to ask us that maybe we could help you out that with that? Right now, I'm a, sorry. I'm drawing a blank. You're drawing a blank. That's all right. No worries. All right. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, so you, you, you just you, you want to make sure that you and your partner are, are getting the best experience possible. I guess we're missing a lot of context mm -hmm. here because I, I certainly was assuming that this was a more unusual circumstance than perhaps it is for you in the year 23, uh, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So is this common for uh, uh, humans and whatever alien species this is to be having sexual relationships? Uh, you, you know, I, I, I am still a lover. I mean, I don't I don't entirely know. Uh, it, uh, I, I, I guess I'm also, uh, as, as much as I am desiring for my partner to be more exploratory, mm, I okay. myself, uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm trying to learn to be a more exploratory too. Okay. So I guess, I guess if I had, if I had a fine point question for Mr. Jet and Diane, it would be, uh, what is something that could perhaps maybe relieve some of that stressful tension of trying to relax more? 
than trying to just have the open minded, I guess, before going into an intimate session. Got it. Diane's really good with relaxing before sex. What do you like to do? I like to focus on my breath and just do deep breathing. Mm hmm. Uh, I feel stressed out. Yeah, uh, meditation. Meditation. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes so I, I'll read a book. Uh, I don't know if you can do that during on the space station. Uh, some people like to watch porn uh, or watch some something erotic just to turn you on. I would have recommended incense, but that sounds mm -hmm. very dangerous in your situation. Yeah, I don't think uh, being having incense on the space station would be a good idea. Um, I I don't I I don't even know the environment there. I I know it's a lot of floating around. Uh, listen to some classical music. There you go. Just. Uh, I mean, doing some yoga, just stretching. Stretching is mm -hmm. always good, uh, especially be before sex. You can oh, yes, yes, yes. stretch your muscles out. Very it's, important. Uh, yoga really does kind of just make your blood flow and just relaxes you and stretches mm -hmm. you out and uses your muscles all at the same time. Uh, I Many don't know. times we've done sexual yoga. Today. Yeah, it's great. Very fun. But I don't know how to do yoga in, in zero gravity. I uh, don't know. I, I mean, work. maybe prop yourself up and do some downward dog or mm -hmm. something like that on the side or something. But um, I would uh, highly suggest that whatever or whoever uh, partner you have just listen to what uh, he or she or it has to say or them and just be in touch. It's, it's okay to have an open conversation while having sex. I know it might be a little, uh, some people think it can be like a turnoff uh, just to start to like you, you're, you're in the moment and you're hot and heavy. And sometimes, especially as a man, if you start to start saying something that like, oh, is this okay? Are you all right with that? You start to feel like this could be a rejection scenario where I could be rejected or uh, I could turn my partner off or I could be turned off. But if you really like this person and you're comfortable with them, then you can you can have that conversation during your your sexual uh, your, activity. Yeah, your activity. Like I. Diane and I, it's just like, are, are you okay with me doing this right now? Or, or like, what what do you want right now? Or mm -hmm. which just position? being on the same page with each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. It's like sometimes you're like, oh, are, are you uncomfortable with this? Or uh, mm -hmm. do you do you want some ass play right now? Or do you want uh, do you want me to go back down on you? Or do you want to get done before I put it in? Something like that. Mm -hmm. So just having that open conversation, that communication while you're having sex, as long as you're comfortable with this person, it's okay. Uh, you don't have to have it be awkward, and you can still make it sexy. Uh, it, and hopefully your partner there will be able to uh, reciprocate, and you'll have a good time. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chad. Okay. I thank you, and I mm -hmm. thank you, Mrs. Diane. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, we hope we answered your question. Right? Yeah, and uh, good luck in 21, uh, 2310. I, I have a lot of questions about what's going to happen from now to then, but um, I will just let you live your life. Uh, so, Klaus, I uh, hope you have a good night, and please stay sex positive out there, my friend. Thank you, thank you. Have a good night, y'all. I'll see you again. Have a good bye. Oh, Ooh, to say. Wow. So, mm. there's a. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna say he's not from the future, but you know, uh, who's to say? Uh, there's. I'm sure there's some. A lot of. Uh, there's some. Some great. I was, I was trying to pick apart what was actually going on. Like, if this whole thing was some type of metaphor. If there was some type of psych psychological issue, that everything was like an analogy, I was trying to figure out what it was, and I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. But uh, hopefully, hopefully we helped him out. Uh, mm -hmm. I really feel that he needs to go see some type of therapist if he's not from the year twenty three ten in in the International Space Station. Um, I don't know, Wells. What, what do you think about that? 
Well, I mean, his name was German and he sounded Italian. Yeah, well, and it so... kind of sounded more okay, Swiss. Maybe it's a language. Yeah, maybe. I mean, in thing. fairness, we don't know what accents what, are going to be like in 300 in years. 300 years. That is true. Yeah. I mean, some people say that uh, colonial America, uh, and sorry, England actually sounded like how we speak in that mm -hmm. uh, they... England just transitioned away from how we speak and they became more how their English dialect is now. We um, don't even know that, that Klaus is a German name at that point. No. I mean, there's so many names that we consider American that are did, didn't derive from here in mm -hmm. any way, shape, or form. So yeah. uh, there's a lot of assumptions we're making, assuming assuming he's being honest about being from the future, which is a, certainly a large leap. But Very I also big. find when you're trying to help people, it's best to work within their, uh, their grounded uh, world that they've set out and uh, uh, agree and, uh, and escalate from there. Well, there's just, I mean, there's a lot of stuff we don't know about uh, in time travel through phone calls could happen, and, sure. but that is the first for this show. Uh, I would wonder why he decided to reach out to a show from 300 years in the past for help. I yeah. think I would hope that there are better resources available um, in the year uh, 2321 mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. it was that might uh, might be more useful, especially if, if sex with uh, other species is that common then. But yeah, or, or maybe, perhaps not. Perhaps mm -hmm. they become more prudish in the future. Maybe Earth is just a uh, wasteland. It's just over overheated and... All our natural resources are gone, and they just have to live on different space stations and have sex with aliens. I don't know. So many questions we didn't think to ask. I know. Well, I wanted to talk about it, but I was just like, "Well, this guy has a sex question. This is a show about relationship and sexual health." So, do we have any uh, other email questions, by the way? I don't. Well, we have one question. Uh huh. Uh, so let's see here. This is from. Roger, he is having, uh, he has a question about having sex and getting an injury. He recently hurt himself. This is very worded mm -hmm. really weird, but uh, he hurt himself while having sex and he wants to know if this is common. So, okay. Roger oh. yeah. from Polsbo, Washington. So, wants to know if sexual injuries are okay and i guess he says he's kind of ashamed about it so he doesn't want to call oh. in so um yeah sexual injuries are are very common um it, well i mean i guess it's more about something that you don't want to talk about it's uh peronis disease is a big one where mm -hmm. if your penis was to uh bend, bend too bend. much it could no, actually no break uh so in it all men, well, not all men, majority of men, it's okay if your your penis kind of goes to one side or the other. Um, it's it uh, rapid hitting uh, against something will sometimes can cause injury, but when it becomes serious is when it becomes more than forty five degrees and it actually performs a knot where the cartilage builds up there as it heals and it becomes painful to penetrate a vagina and have sex. So uh, there is a surgery for it and I don't know if it'll help because what it happens is they actually cut out a portion of the penis and your penis becomes smaller. And I don't know if that's something that's, that's an option. That's for Peyronie's disease. That's for Peyronie's disease. Not yeah. for just, uh, there's a lot of men just who have normal. But I'm saying yeah. Peyronie's disease is uh, more than a 45 degree angle. Mm -hmm. And there's a knot and it becomes painful to have sex. Um, so there's options. There's even, even options to without surgery. So I don't know what those options are. Uh, Peter, do you know what those are? Uh, uh, not specifically, no. Uh, this is definitely a place where you'd want to see a urologist. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, surgery is one of the most common solutions because generally it is a buildup of scar tissues. So that does have to be surgically removed typically. Mm -hmm. um, 
but but also, uh, I'm, I, this was Roger, you said? Mm-hmm. Um, Roger from Roger. Polsbo, Washington. Yeah. He, I don't think he was too specific about the injury, right? Because there's, yeah, there's a lot of... He, he, he didn't want to say he wanted to talk about it. So There are a lot of types of injuries that are mm-hmm. very common in mm-hmm. sex. I mean, it's, it's not just that. I mean, at the very minimum, you can easily cut yourself with sexual play, even with mm-hmm. masturbation. Uh, oftentimes, people get to, uh, especially at the beginning of a relationship, maybe they have too much, much sex and you'll end up with, uh, with raw skin yeah. Oh, yeah um you'll end up yeah. cut i mean there's the classic uh, zipper injuries but mm. uh y- yeah another common one is uh people will uh, will leave their clothing on during sex maybe push the uh, underwear to the side push the panties to the side or go through a flap and you'll actually end up with uh, uh um, friction against the panties uh during sex and that will often cause mm. some severe mm. uh, you know, um yeah. uh uh uh, uh Mm, abrasions yeah, and and things. rashing and it's it's difficult for men especially I, I assume for women too but particularly for for men just because of uh certain certain types of drives there but when men do get injured um they would theoretically have to abstain fully from everything including masturbation and even uh erections can cause the the uh wounds to open back up again so Mm -hmm. it takes a very long time much longer than a normal wound for uh, a penile injury to heal and Mm -hmm. that can be quite troublesome and uh, i I, i'm embarrassing for some certainly it shouldn't have to be but Mm -hmm. it it just is and i understand that so dan there are medications that that can help if there's some scar tissue and and some swelling Mm -hmm. in less severe cases so sometimes you don't need to have surgery. Oh, I mean, we're talking a lot about yeah. men. What about women? So the vagina can get actually quite sore if it has too much penetration. That is true. Um, so, like, if we go at it for a long time, yeah, it's just it, too Diane much. has to be like oral only for the next couple of days. Mm-hmm. Don't put anything in there. It, it gets too, it's too raw. Uh, That's just when we bone like a so, lot. More. So in Germany, prostitution is legal, and there are actually creams. brothels. They have numbing creams yeah, they have for, numbing creams for, for the women. prostitutes in there who put them on their vaginas. And, that's very and, sad. And it is super sad, but I mean, that's their job. But and it's, it's still come on. Yeah. Even if it's their job. There. Yeah, it is super sad. So. Uh, the, that's a whole nother story of the whole sex industry being mm-hmm. legal. It's it, it's still it's not exactly, um, it's not legit. I don't know. It, there's still the sex it, lords. There's still. It's similar to a lot of other industries mm-hmm. in that a lot of industries um, exploit their workers, um, take advantage of mm-hmm. them uh, and their physical abilities. I mean, look at coal miners, mm-hmm. look at uh, assembly line workers, look at the the terrible conditions that uh, people in the uh, the meat plants, the chicken plants especially, went on, went through during COVID nineteen. Uh, so it's it's really any industry where someone's uh, physical abilities are are Exploited. what someone else is relying mm-hmm. on to make money. Um, that that there, there's a, a severe conflict there and a lot of room for exploitation. So I do feel I do fear that people overfocus on uh, sex work as though it it differs from that dramatically. And I realize it often has, but oftentimes that's because there's Ill- illegalities to it that add an extra level of stigma to it. And then there's no protections there in place. It's complicated and I don't want to attempt to oversimplify it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, people get injured on the job and that's that's awful and, and needs yeah. to be well, The whole trafficking it. thing, like mm-hmm. people were, are forced into that industry without, without their consent or mm-hmm. against their will. And that's a whole nother problem there. Um, But we'll go ahead and continue to talk about that. But first, we're going to go ahead and uh, talk about a someone who, uh, sorry, a brand that we're going to go ahead and promote on this show. It's called Smooth My Balls. Smooth My Balls. Your balls aren't smooth without Smooth My Balls. This is a grooming product that will shave your pubes. Mm-hmm. Without cutting your scrotum, uh, you know that you want this, Wells. Smooth my balls if you go I ahead. I do. Yeah. I really do. It my manscaping a- products just aren't doing it for me. And I want my balls to be smooth. Um, that makes me feel, it makes me feel more like a man when I'm smoother, not only around the balls, but also the chest area. It accentuates the muscles better. Oh yeah. Makes everything look mm-hmm. bigger. Looks great. I'm a fan. Yeah, we love yeah. smoother balls here. 
Yeah, so... I love smooth balls, too. Yeah, no... This isn't 1970 or 1965 here. The things have changed. People want people hairless. And whether or not you're a male or a female, um, just pubic hair is not attractive anymore. So if you... Uh, like well, I mean, I, it depends on the person. Some people some yeah. people find it natural. So let's not say I mean, that it's not attractive. Yeah, I mean, cause... sorry, I apologize. To some, it's not attractive. To some, it's. I mean, oh, Peter really likes pubes, and that's his. Uh, yeah, that's, that's his, his kink. That's his thing, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's but nothing wrong with that. Uh, there's a lot of people who, for some reason, just like a nice chiseled, uh, hairless area and nice uh, chiseled. I didn't realize the pubes. No, I'm talking chiseled. about. I'm talking about like. Chiseled, oh yeah. Oh yes. The hairless. Yes, yes. Or I just like. I mean, even like the V line on the. Uh, oh, V lines are hot. The V line going well, down in to the, your penis. In the nudist community, there's a whole movement called smoothies. Um, okay. the, the younger nudists call uh, have a, a whole group called smoothies, and that's exactly what they are. They they're complete. They go hairless, and it's it's perfectly mm-hmm. fine. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I think all types are are beautiful. I think there's absolutely some places for pubic hair, and some places where some people look fantastic without it. So mm-hmm. it's wonderful to have products like this. Uh, I I personally actually do prefer myself uh, at least well groomed, and so a product mm-hmm. like this that uh, that helps achieve that without all the the nicks. And I mean, talk about potential injury. This is a great segue from that topic because mm-hmm. with classic techniques of using a, a, a even a safety razor is not that safe in that area you will oh, typically yeah. end up with no. some nicks and some real pain yeah uh, it's, so it's something designed for it is There's, wonderful the skin around your scrotum and around the, the where the scrotum connects to the penis like that skin is incredibly sensitive and thin and any type of small um, metal that goes back and forth there, that'll easily cut it. And, and so what Smooth My Balls does is it actually, uh, it, it, I don't know if it's plastic, but there's something in it that it, it has a safeguard that uh, when it goes like that, it, it actually doesn't cut your skin, which is great. Because um, also there's a, there's a chance if, if, you, if you have HPV, if you're shaving your balls with a razor, uh, or anywhere around your genitals, you can get genital warts from that. If if it gets becomes infected, if it if it becomes a pimple, and then the pimple will turn can turn into a genital wart just from the the HPV virus or the human papilloma virus will make that into a genital wart, which has to be froze off, and then uh, the immune system comes in and effect, and and takes over that and makes it go away. But anyways. Um, highly recommend doing a shaving technique or um, a waxing that doesn't have. But no man, I mean, look at that. Your 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 testicles. Mm-hmm. It's it's very. Like, I mean, that is like a a moon crater. It's there's it's hard to get that type of wax. I mean, Diane waxes. Oh, is, I waxed my vagina the first time last week. And it was great. And she's like, it was been a week and she's still very uh, smooth. Very but it smooth. hurt really bad. Yeah. It was very challenging to do that on my own. I, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if I recommend that. To do it on your own? Would yeah. you not, Are, are you going to do it again, Diane? I don't know. I don't know. So for the podcast listeners, it's smoothmyballs.refr.cc slash live. You will get a discount for 20 20% is 20% off of all of off. their products there on mm-hmm. smoothmyballs.com your bars balls are not smooth without small smooth my balls mm-hmm. uh guys do you have anything else to add for today uh no smooth balls are great we talked a lot That's about all. sex injuries mm-hmm. we talked mm-hmm. about a lot about uh mm-hmm. health with sexual Organs and areas, your groin, uh, guinal hernia. I, I would yeah. say, I would say one big piece mm-hmm. of advice in that general uh, area, no pun intended, is don't be afraid to talk to your doctor if you have any concerns or issues. Uh, you'd be surprised, um, shocked perhaps, by what your doctor has seen and heard mm-hmm. and dealt with, and anything you bring to them is probably mundane to them by now compared to what they deal with on a regular basis. So don't let yourself live in in 
pain or in fear or discomfort or anything with any of the types of sexual injuries or uh, risks of uh, STIs. I mean, uh, those uh, untreated can cause all sorts of additional problems and most have amazing treatments available for them now as well. So anything that you have that's a concern there, um, treat it as you as you should the rest of your body. I mean, I, I know it's a, a problem in our culture with people uh, avoiding getting help for all sorts of problems, you know, I, you know even very serious things like uh, heart conditions and whatnot, people are afraid to see a doctor about, but don't be if you've if you've got insurance, uh, you know, and you can you can afford it, which I know is its own stumbling block, but just get in there and get the help and get it taken care of. And the peace of mind is amazing. And there's, there's no, nothing sexier than feeling healthy. There you exactly. Go, I mean, it it was weird when I had to go show uh, the doctor my penis when I mm -hmm. for this is like, you know what? He's a dude and it's not a big deal. Um, when I went into surgery for my guinal hernia, uh, oh, they shaved all his pubes, shaved my pubes off greatly. Mm -hmm. uh, it was amazing. But when I, they, I, I went into the surgery room, uh, all the nurses there came in were all women and they're like, we're your nurses for uh -huh. this, uh, for the surgery. I'm like, all right, all these women are going to be looking at my wiener. And yeah. so, but mm -hmm. that's just, that's their job. They've seen big hundreds big to big thousands of wieners. Uh, yeah. Wells is, uh, Wells is mom's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a mm -hmm. nurse. Is that correct? Yeah. We've talked about that. Yeah. How many that's wieners do you think she's time. seen? Thousands? It's weird to talk about the number of wieners my mom has seen, uh, but yeah, I would say thousands uh, at this point. Not because probably well, probably over sexually. a thousand. Yeah. No. I I have like, a uh, I have a spermatocyst, which is a large uh, cyst on my vas deferens on on one of my testicles, and mm -hmm. years back I had to get that checked out because I didn't know what it was at the time, and I was afraid of uh, testicular cancer. Oh, and again, it's a big one. I, I did get it checked out. It took me a long time because I was definitely very much afraid and embarrassed. And I went in and I, I saw a doctor and talked about it and they had me uh, referred in for an ultrasound. And yeah, the, the, the two nurse, I mean, the, there's, there's one nurse um, holding my testicles and running an ultrasound wand over it. There's another nurse standing there holding my penis out of the way. And I'm there, there and they both looked bored, which I guess uh, was <laughs> maybe good. perhaps a bit of an ego hit to me, mm -hmm. but it was also probably re more reassuring well, than... <laughs> Even if you had an amazing it. penis, they're not going to look excited. Yeah. To, oh, yeah. Uh, to, right. to hold right. it in a medical exam. It's not one of those yeah. pornos where it's like right. the nurses are going to start Yeah. No, it, it really dis yeah. disabused me of a lot of expectations I yeah. had from years of pornography before that. Well, I mean, that's their job. Like with yeah. any job, like I used to work as a barista in high school and I fucking hated coffee after that. I was just like, I don't want to see another goddamn coffee grind. Like, and it's just like, and I, and I, and I, I mean, I don't drink coffee anymore, but not because of that. It's just like any type of job, you're just like, you're desensitized. It's like, uh -huh. it, it's just part of your job and that's all it is. And that's what these doctors do. It's just like, yeah, it's another dick. And you know what? I've seen a thousand dicks that are in way worse shape, shape than this. So it's not a big deal. Just go ahead and get yourself checked out. There's no reason to be in pain. There's no reason to have your life end because of some type of very preventable uh, disease or condition or have you be uncomfortable when having sex. Everybody deserves to be happy. Uh, and everybody deserves to have pleasure. Mm -hmm. And so you need to just go ahead and seek the help that you need to mm -hmm. obtain that pleasure. And, uh, hope, and you know what? Your partner is going to be fine with it if you have somebody who's, uh, you know, caring and loving. And if you're not having somebody who's caring and loving all wounds heal and you will go ahead and you will find a partner who's okay with that and eventually it will be a funny story just like my aguinal hernia, hernia that i had because i held in my farts that's our show everybody i hope you guys have a good night thank you wells thank you peter and please stay sex positive out there be safe covid is coming back uh with the delta variant variant we thank you very much. Have a good night, guys. Good night.